Welcome to Friendever the Podcast, the weekly podcast where we explore the highs and lows of friendship with your hosts, Danielle and Kayla. As we journey through life, our friendships often evolve and change, ebb and flow, and sometimes even come to an end. Danielle and I are lifelong advocates for the power of friendship, and we are here to guide all of us to the many challenges and joys that come with building and maintaining strong, meaningful connections with those around us. Join us each week as we deep dive into the intricacies of friendship, from navigating conflicts to fostering new relationships and everything in between. With insightful interviews, personal anecdotes, and expert advice, Friendever is the perfect podcast for anyone looking to strengthen their bonds with the people they love. So, whether you are on the go, taking care of chores, or just settling in, get ready to explore the world of friendship on Friendever, the podcast. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome back to Friendever, the podcast. My name is Danielle. And I'm Kayla. Hey, hey. And we are thrilled to be introducing episode 11 to you guys. This week, we are talking Woo! about loyalty and what it means for friendship. Hey guys, it's Danielle here with a side note. You may think to yourself, wow, this audio quality doesn't seem great. Well, that would be because I forgot to plug in my microphone and I was talking into it the whole time, but it was actually recording on my computer. So I'm sorry about that, but I hope you enjoy the episode anyways. This concludes our side note. Now back to the episode. It might be a little bit of a unique take the way we are attacking this and we're, we're going to come right out and say you know up front that this might not be your typical uh what you think of a loyalty that's what we should be listening to right things that maybe not challenge our perspective but give us a different view and yeah. really what I want to say is that we're not going into it talking about the benefits of loyalty we're, we're talking about what mm-hmm. it is and how it should affect you and how you should not let it affect you so there's a it's a multifaceted and we're going to do our best to be fair and to be honest and to be reasonable but really we want to attack it from all sides to give you a full and complete view of this people people's actions can be harmful but they do it all under this umbrella of loyalty Mm -hmm. and it's yeah there's a lot to dig into here so super excited yeah all right let's jump right in we're going to talk about the the good stuff Loyalty and friendship goes beyond just good times and good vibes. It's it's more so about being there through thick and thin. And if I can draw your attention to the parable of the prodigal son really quickly, the prodigal son leaves his father's house. He goes out and makes friends. He takes his father, father's inheritance. And when he loses all of his money, how it's portrayed, obviously, in like Sunday school and children's church, stuff like that, is that his friends are all partiers. And then when he loses all his money, they're no longer there for them. So that is a very good illustration of it. It's so much more than just being there in the good times. You also need to be there through thick and thin. So loyalty means being supportive, even when it's not convenient for you to be supportive. That doesn't mean you have to excuse everything that they do. And it really doesn't mean that you have to be 100% unwavering in your loyalty. I mean, you know, it's healthy, you know, it's a good boundary. And if you don't, I highly recommend you seek counsel because okay I'm getting ahead of myself we're going to get into all of that later but (laughs) what I'm saying is that even when it's not convenient for you to be there for someone uh and and whatever convenience means to you maybe you have to go get them from the airport in the middle of the night or maybe you have to watch their kids while they're going through you know family therapy with their husband or something like that even if it's not something that you would enjoy doing being there for someone and being loyal to them is more than just a convenience when the time is right. Right. And really being loyal means having someone's best interest in mind. So it's not supporting their every decision or their every action. Mm -hmm. It's um, being willing to speak up when you see that something could be potentially harmful for them or something wasn't right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that loyalty aspect is providing a safe space for when they're coming out of a difficult thing that you know you didn't approve them so a lot of times we hear like um you know I support you but I don't agree with you that kind of thing that's not really what loyalty is it's not being supportive Mm -hmm. even if it's not if it goes against your moral compass or your belief system right it's about being there for them when they find themselves and when it's time to come home just like the the father of the prodigal was there for his son he did not go out and live that raucous lifestyle with him when he was out there. 
Right. And again, <laughs> I'm I'm laughing because we're jumping ahead into what loyalty isn't, and it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna be so layered in this episode. So I'm sorry if it seems like we're jumping around, but we want to make sure, like I said at the beginning, that we cover every aspect because we don't want it to be uh, an enigma, confusion. By the end of this, we want you guys to have a full, or at least a better understanding of what loyalty is and what it is not. So if someone is out there living a life that is destructive or unhealthy, loyalty does not mean going and feeding that destructive lifestyle with your support. It means providing a safe space for them when it's time for them to come out. Or if they need guidance, loyalty is it, it, it's being there for them in a healthy way to help them and not in turn to affect yourself and your soul and your life and right. and other people who are dependent on you and like we mentioned in pretty much every episode because it's such a huge factor in friendship is that trust is a crucial component to the loyalty of friendship if someone is worried that you're going to turn around and stab them in the back every time they're out of your presence guess what you do not have loyalty in your friendship and yeah. if they have to be worried about you talking about them or sharing intimate details about their life with someone else that's that's not loyalty and that's that's more of your traditional mm -hmm. view of loyalty so yeah. uh, you got to have a trust element betwixt your friends if i may use that word <laughs> in order to have the 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 bond that loyalty brings to friendship challenges to loyalty in, can include friends making harmful choices and or conflicts with each other if you're in a friend group uh and i use i know we use that term a lot and so it's not as black and white as like, okay, I have a friend group, whereas these people are just best friends. It ebbs, it flows. You you got seasons of life. You got different people in your friendship pyramid. I'm talking about the core group that you actively choose to spend most of your time with. Okay. If, <laughs> if two of your friends are going at it and are struggling in their friendship, that does not mean loyalty is choosing one or the other. Being loyal to both of them is actively pursuing a resolution that keeps your friend group together and healthy and strong and building those foundations that will lead to a long lasting hopefully lifelong connectivity and friendship with those people also communication and empathy and forgiveness those are all essential strategies for nurturing loyalty um with you know one-on-one -on -one friends or in a group aspect and if that's something that you have a hard time doing, so granting forgiveness, asking forgiveness, showing empathy, um, then it may be time to re-examine your loyalties. Mm -hmm. And I know therapy is primarily aimed at couples and families and individuals and that kind of thing. And I'm not saying that your friend group needs to go and seek professional counseling, but the strategies that are used in those kind of sessions could be activated to help your group like navigate issues where loyalty could be a problem okay what if one friend is doubting another friend's loyalty to the friend group again what does loyalty mean it means trust confidence uh understanding that they have your best interests at heart and we're we're gonna dive way way more into what loyalty isn't here in a few minutes but loyalty is let's talk about loyalty is celebrating each other's successes being there for each other in inconvenient times, like we talked about. Uh, genuine appreciation for the people in your life and not expecting an excessive amount from them. Loyalty is so much more than stabbing someone in the back with gossip or whatever, because that's typically what it's viewed as. It, it, there, There is genuine loyal friendships are frankly invaluable treasures that should be cherished, but it's sometimes it's easier to understand a concept if you know what it isn't rather than if you know what it is. So we're going to dive into around 10 ish, which more might crop up as we're, as we're talking about it, but um, instances of what loyalty is not. So if you would bear with us, we're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back to talk about what loyalty is often misconstrued as. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we are now diving into what loyalty is not. 
or what is misconstrued as. And I'm a teacher, so I often admonish my kids to take notes. And this is a podcast, so obviously you can go back and listen to it anytime you want, or you might not even take what we say seriously enough to uh, to you know pack it away. But if you are <laughs> someone who needs a visual representation of, of, of what you hear, now might be a good time to, to take out a notebook, even if you just write these yeah. down to make yourself a graphic organizer to see how it affects you, how it doesn't, or you might recognize a pattern in your life of something that loyalty is misconstrued as for you or for someone else in your life. And I think that would help you navigate getting out of that situation or getting through that situation. So that's just my little teacher right. plug to uh, take some notes. Um, and uh, ho- those, hopefully this will be a support. And if you do recognize some of those patterns, um, you don't need to fret that you have, oh my word, my friends are terrible. They're not loyal to me, mm-hmm. but it does maybe merit a conversation. Yeah. Um, and still take notes if you're not recognizing these patterns because they may come up in the future. Yeah. Because I, I am a firm believer in, I mean, not every single thing needs to be aired out, but if you can head something off now, it would be much easier to navigate in the future. You don't need to go air out conflict, especially if it's not your own conflict, if it's someone else's conflict. You don't need to go air it out every single time. But if it's a if it's a big enough situation that it affects you or affects your spirituality, and it's you know, if you're unable to forgive someone for one of these instances, recognizing it can only only be a help at this stage. So we're not trying to tell you how to live your life, but we are friend over the podcast and you tuned in for a reason. So let's go. Number one, <laughs> loyalty is often misconstrued as blind support. Uh, we touched on yes. this a little bit in earlier because I couldn't help myself. I was jumping all around, but some individuals um, may mistakenly believe that loyalty means unquestioningly supporting a friend or loved one, even when they're engaging in harmful destructive or even like unethical behavior this is enabling this is enabling that destructive behavior rather than helping them so you are not just saying like go live your life I approve of it and I'm support you no you be there for them but loyalty is not going to help that person make better choices by saying I support you 100 that's blind support right and loyalty is often, often, often misconstrued as that, particularly, and I don't want to step out of my my scope of range here, but in parents, because you got that, you know, unconditional support, um, but blind support is not enabling someone in their bad choices or their destructive life habits. That's just not what it is. Right. I actually know of a story uh, where a man that was previously addicted to drugs actually got re-addicted during COVID. He was clean for several years, got addicted again during COVID and um, lived in a different state than all of his family. Uh, But recently, like in the past year or so, his sister, his loyal sister went, flew out um, and searched the area that he was in, the city that he was in on foot um, and just asking other homeless people, have you seen this guy? Um, he was avoiding contact with her because just drugs messing with your brain. Mm-hmm. Um, but she eventually found him and flew him all the way back home, got him through rehab, paid for it. And um, today he is, he is uh, I think, over 100 days clean. Wow. And yeah, he's going to a church and it's just so awesome to see that loyalty played out in that way. True loyalty. Yeah. It was not easy Mm -hmm. and he's a grown adult and she could have just been like, Hey, you're making your choices. You're reaping what you're sowing. Right. But yeah. So, uh, that is a moving story of loyalty for me. Yeah. I mean, she was loyal to him not to his decisions right she was loyal as a person who cared about him and wanted him to get his life together if she used blind support loyalty which is often a mistaken form of loyalty she could have been like oh if he's living his truth he's living the life he wants to live i'm gonna support him in his drug addiction (laughs) 
<laughs> living his truth, you know? No, that is blind support. That is ridiculous. That is not actual loyalty. So blind support, right. listener, is not what loyalty is, um, which leads us to our second listing of what loyalty is not, is misplaced loyalty. Sometimes you might feel um, loyalty toward a person or a group that does not reciprocate that loyalty or does not have your best interest at heart. Uh, this can lead to a very one-sided or unhealthy relationship that's not balanced. Um, I often think of people who give their life. I, If I can pull in a story that I also heard, an employee worked at a company for several years I heard this on the internet, so, you know, true or not true, take it as you will, but it's a good (laughs) lesson. And they worked for several years and they passed away unexpectedly. And the next day when the company found out, they cleaned out the desk and put up a job listing for that person's job Mm. because that's what it was. It was a position that needed filling. If that person had let their entire life, and I don't know that person, I don't know what their life was, but using that as an example... If that person had let their entire life be surrounded by their career, the second they were gone, that spot needed filling. And that company did not have, uh, you know, did not hurt for that person, did not long for them to return, was not mm-hmm. grieved by their passing. I mean, their coworkers may have, but the the corporation that they were loyal to did not. So they spent their time, or it's possible to misplace your loyalty for a company or a group or or whatever that in turn does not reciprocate for you you hear about people in bad relationships um where you know the the girlfriend is so obsessed with her boyfriend but and she's so loyal to him and and she's she's you know blinded by her her feelings of love that she doesn't care that he doesn't Mm -hmm. reciprocate that same loyalty to her okay and so she ends up in abusive relationship because she misplaced her loyalty right and and what kind of life is that to live that you've 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 put it in the wrong the wrong thing like loyalty needs to be placed in in heartfelt balanced relationships where someone cares about you in return yeah it's got to be reciprocal yeah and it can change depending on you know if it's a work relationship where they're your superiors versus a friendship you know the level of reciprocity is going to be or what reciprocity looks like is going to be different right but um, as a general rule of thumb for friendships, you've it's got to be reciprocal yeah. loyalty. I'm really glad that you you brought up that because they need to prove. If you're going to pour so much love and attention into a relationship with someone, or it, not not necessarily even a romantic relationship like a a mentorship or anything like that, they need to prove that they care about you just as much in return, or yeah. else, therefore, it is misplaced. Mm-hmm. I I mean. It's it's kind of hard to say that's that's just the black and white. There's no gray area there. But a good rule of thumb is that the give and take in any relationship, including ones that involve lo- loyalty, which is pretty much any relationship, it needs to be proven, definable, point to that moment in history, loyalty. Right. And oftentimes, um, again, going back to that work situation where they're your superiors, um, they're going to, they should show their loyalty to you in different ways. Now you're going to show your loyalty to them probably, you know, by working for them, right. um, doing, doing the things they need you to do. It's a very, on your side, it's more of a doing relationship, but on their side, loyalty can look like, Hey, I'm not going to ask you to do unreasonable things right. for an unreasonable price. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to ask you, uh, to do things last minute. Yeah. Um, setting healthy boundaries and respecting your personal life as well Mm -hmm. yeah I the job thing resonates with me not as someone who spends too much time my job like I work my 40 and I'm done it's actually 35 but you know um I have a person who's on my team at work she's you know a teacher that I um it's my grade subject team who told me yesterday in a meeting oh yeah how do you guys find time to do all this stuff I've had to start grading on the weekends and I was like I would rather die (laughs) than grade a single paper on the weekends are you kidding me like it makes me kind of sick that that. I have to podcast from the same desk that I work at but like I work at home you know it's like she (laughs) is so loyal to this job 
that does not give her enough time. I mean, it right. could be time management issues, but my point yeah. is, is that she feels such pressure to perform for this job. Yeah. That she will give up her time. She's not being paid for. And and let me tell you something. The company, my school does not require that of her, but she feels a certain amount of loyalty to them that she's willing to do that, even though they don't expect that to. They ask us, please shut down your computers at four. Take some time. Work-life balance is very important to the culture, but people mm-hmm. are just loyal to the cause and loyal to their students or whatever. Misplaced, and we are spending a lot of time on this one, but it's super important. So I'm, mm-hmm. you know, I just want to make sure we cover it. And so she is now spending what time she should be spending with her, her husband and children and, and life and, and, you know, for us church and whatever, she's grading papers on a weekend. No stinking way. Will you ever see me do that? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So just got worked up over that one. And there's probably more that we'll get worked up over, but let's move into number three, Uh, fear of conflict. Kayla, why don't you walk us through that one? Yeah. So some people, um, I would definitely say I lean more toward this category, um, might avoid addressing issues or conflicts with um, their friends because they think it's disloyal to bring up problems. Um, I wouldn't say that this is the reason I do it. I just, I'm very uncomfortable with confrontation. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, That is definitely something I struggle with, but the fact is this can lead to unresolved issues and potentially damaging the relationship further because yeah. all that stuff is going to get bottled up and then it's going to spill out. Mm-hmm. I agree. I, I mean, my friend group. So tomorrow is actually 10 years for us. So Aww. at the time of us shooting this, I think we talked about this when we last recorded, but at the time of us shooting, shooting this tomorrow is our 10 years. So you know, a month from now when this drops or whatever, it'll have been October. But um, it was, so three of us are very non-confrontational. And I wouldn't say that I'm very confrontational, but I'm just like, I'm not afraid of it. And so whenever something comes up, those three are like, sweep it under the rug, like pretend it wasn't there, whatever. Mm -hmm. And we're all adults. I mean, we can we can navigate conflict but in those few few situations where it came up it's like bro that got swept under the rug two years ago but we're bringing it up because it never got dealt with you know Mm -hmm. um or someone made a joke about something that we didn't realize we were not supposed to make a joke about but because we never addressed it here we are later it getting dealt with or maybe not dealt with but but you know having to face it again so fear of conflict can can like if you say okay I'm loyal to this person so therefore I'm not going to bring up what bothers me or whatever that's not loyalty Mm -hmm. that's not best interest for you or the other person or the friend group or whatever Mm -hmm. if you avoid addressing those issues people don't often think of this as loyalty but that's what loyalty is not right loyalty is not ignoring situations for the temporary relief of like okay we don't have to deal with that anymore Right. Also revisiting what you said about you being more of an addresser friend in your friend group. Mm -hmm. Um, Oftentimes you can see the addresser friend being so adamant about addressing things and getting it on the table that they might go and try to fix Mm -hmm. the avoider friends problems for them. Yeah. Under this, under the umbrella of loyalty. Oh yeah. And that that's also what loyalty is not because Mm -hmm disregarding your friend's wishes is not loyalty Mm -hmm. absolutely uh, I remember a situation a couple years ago where one of my friends was in a conflict with someone else and I wanted to go take mm -hmm. care of it for them I wanted to do that because they weren't doing it for themselves and so oh I was getting worked up and I was like oh and not only like logistically could I not have done it it wasn't also my place but man I wanted to so bad but that wasn't my place. Yeah. And so no. out of my literal loyalty to her, I stayed out of it because that was what right. was best for her. Uh, it didn't yeah. feel like what was best for me, but it really had nothing to do with me. But by golly, I wanted to take care of that. Because yeah. to you, it might feel like, oh, I'm loyal. Like I'm, I want to go fix this. Yeah. But to her, it's like, 
you just broke my trust. Now mm-hmm. I feel like I can't tell you things. Yeah. So if you think about um, it in like a military standpoint, so that's what typically if if you really get to the root of it, that's the kind of stuff that it applies to, like loyal to this cause, loyal to this country, loyal to this military, that I'm literally willing to die for this situation. And then if I abandon it, therefore I'm not loyal to it. Loyalty in this day and age is not that. And loyalty and friendship is not that. So loyalty is such a massive word. It's usually a loyal to a cause or like I said, an entity. Um, but loyalty for friendship is navigating with the person, your friend's best interests at heart. All right, let's move into number four. Um, this one is important to me. I mean, they're all important, but this one, I just, I see it a lot and it it bothers me and it makes me feel sorry for people. Number four is loyalty is not sacrificing yourself for others, like neglecting your yourself or your responsibilities for someone else. Mm-hmm. Okay. There are times, I just want to cover this before we get into it. There are times that you set yourself aside to help someone else to, like I said, when it's not yeah. convenient, but there's also other times where you press so hard in the interest of someone else that your family suffers you suffer Mm -hmm. your responsibility suffer I take that woman that I talked about from work I would imagine that the time that she on a Saturday is grading papers she could be spending time with her husband right exactly or doing a hobby that she liked or something so while supporting friends and loved ones is so important and that is such an important part of life is is being the village for someone else misconstrued loyalty might lead to someone who continually puts their own needs and their own well-being on the back burner yeah and and puts someone else's issue or someone else's cause going back to the cause thing you know loyalty to to cause country entity whatever putting that in the front and then neglecting themselves which will i can guarantee you only be a detriment right in their life and when we say Right. When we say they're neglecting themselves, um, that doesn't mean it's like, well, they're not practicing selflessness. And, um, you know, what that means is, like Danielle said, um, letting their family fail, letting their marriage fail so they can pour into other people. Mm -hmm. It's not just, well, this is inconvenient for me. I'm going to put myself first here. I'm going to prioritize myself, self-care. That's not what that is. You know how many that, pastors get burned out because they pour so much into their saints that their family, you know, is affected. They're right. so yeah. loyal to their saints and their people that self-care or family care is neglected. And this doesn't happen all the right. time. And I'm not thinking of anyone in particular, but you just, that's a really solid example of someone being loyal to their call, which obviously there's a whole spiritual implication in that that we're not going to touch. But can we go back to our favorite word? Balance. Any mm-hmm. sort of SEL, social emotional learning, connectivity, therapy, anytime you're talking about humans, human nature, human actions, you have to go back to the word balance. Because loyalty is not neglecting yourself or your response. And neglect is not self is not the same thing as being selfless. Neglect is mm-hmm abandonment is not abandoning yourself your family your identity for a secondary cause right I have to take a mandated reporter training every year I've had to do it every year since 2017 so I'm very familiar with the process because um everyone in education is a as a mandated reporter I think pastors like clergy are um police officers so for those of you who don't know mandated reporting is a uh, obligation to the state that if you see someone in a self-harm for me it's for kids uh you know if you see that they are being abused physically emotionally or sexually um or if they're have neglect in their life you are legally mandated to report it to the state of california so when i see those kinds of things and i and i learn about neglect and i i, I see the effects of it i know that it's not just kids who experience neglect because there's plenty of parents who are so focused on developing their kids and making sure they have everything they need that they are, they sometimes neglect their self and their identity. And we talked with Carissa a few weeks ago um, in our uh, episode five, our episode six of 
why your spouse can't be your only friend and how mm-hmm. friendships outside of your marriage help to prevent personal identity and neglect and you just loyalty is not neglecting yourself for someone else yeah it's, it's you I I don't know how to say it other than it's a balance because you can't go so far into one side like oh my self-care and my blah 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 and whatever and then also mm-hmm. neglect what you ha- should have some loyalty to your church your calling your family you just right. you you have to have a little bit of everything in a proper balance, balance. yeah <laughs> the fifth element of what loyalty is not that we're talking about is group think so in a group setting many people may misconstrue loyalty by conforming to the group's beliefs or actions even if they personally disagree you're going to see this a lot of time at work someone's got a promotion on the line and instead of standing up to the CEO to say, no, I think that's going to take the company in a bad direction. They will line up and be like, yep, I agree because that's what's expected of them. And that's where you get the idea of like being a yes man, uh, agreeing with someone just because you think that will make you look better in their eyes. You see this in almost every type of entity on the planet. Like think of an entity, you're going to find some element of groupthink and some element of a yes man in there because a leader is so easy to hey I got all these people who agree with my vision uh and who yeah. are not providing a healthy balance to whatever the entity needs you know um right like I said any entity on the planet is going to have some element of group thing so it's going to stifle your individuality your critical thinking and potentially be harmful to the entity's long-term goals because loyalty mm-hmm. to an individual or a, or a group outweighs the loyalty to the cause at hand right you don't want a friend group or a company or whatever to come crashing burning down Mm -hmm. because you didn't provide your honest feedback yeah because everyone lined up and said yes sir that's the way to do it we're gonna do it like i mean what if a general has got a course of action where they can either cross a bridge or cross a desert but the bridge is rickety it'll get there you there faster but it's missing bolts or it's missing uh or you know slats in the bridge or whatever and then all of your uh lieutenants and captains or whatever are like you know the general wants to go across the bridge and they're like yes sir that's the fastest way we're going to reach our goal and then one person's like but you know what the desert would be a little bit safer and we have a higher probability of succeeding if we go this way oh well this will be faster and the general wants to do it so we're going to line up and do it And then you start to cross the bridge and you break it and your entire army drowns. So did your group really succeed if you by, you know, yes, sir, that's the way we're going to do it. Are you actually being loyal to the cause at hand or are you being loyal to an individual Mm -hmm. that is not, (laughs) that's not going to actually achieve whatever you're like, your friend group or your company or whatever it may be, whatever, you know what your goal is in the end, in the long run. Right. Okay. The sixth thing that loyalty is not, and this kind of falls into the fear of conflict that we were talking about earlier is ignoring red flags because sometimes loyalty can lead people to turn a blind eye to these warning signs and of problematic behavior Uh in their friend or their family, their loved one. And they're like, Oh, well, I should always trust them and defend them. Well, don't turn a blind eye to those red flags yeah. because everything can come crashing down if you um, let that bottle up. Mm-hmm. The red flags are not there for you to be like, oh, well, you know, that's just that they're just cut from a different cloth. That's just how they live. No, that's the red flag. That's like, hey, you need to help them. That's the banner that's waving that says, hey, I need help and I need help now. And whatever behaviors I'm exhibiting or whatever issues that I'm facing, I, that red flag is not for you to be like, oh, ignore. It's for you to jump in and help them, not trust them, not defend them, not excuse their behavior, but help pull them out of the mire that they have found themselves in, mm-hmm. which actually is, I kind of just jumped ahead, but that's also number seven, enabling destructive behavior Loyalty is not saying, oh, well, that's their life. Just like we talked about earlier um, with the, mm-hmm. the woman who found her, lo- her, found her brother. Um, you know, 
and, and like I said at the beginning, we're jumping around because there's so many here, but six and seven, ignoring the red flags is not that actually ignoring them is enabling your destructive behavior. So you're being, you're not having loyalty on two fronts here, not intervening, not seeking help. That's why people do mm-hmm. interventions, right? That's why I've heard of a famous comedian who walked into his apartment and like 10 people were there to have a group intervention for him. Or if you listen to Odyssey, a group <laughs> intersection uh, to help get him on the right path. You know, they mm-hmm. were not, they were done enabling him and saying, oh, well, he's famous. He's rich. He can do whatever he wants. No, that's not, yeah. that's not loyalty to just say, okay, you live your, what you think is your best life, buddy. I'm just going to hang back and watch it unfold. Right. Helping them, yeah. stepping in because they don't even know that they need help usually. Right. And if you're, if you lean more toward being an avoider like me, it can be so hard sometimes to address those kind of things with your friends, because really, if you have their best interest at heart, then you want to warn them when it's like, Hey, people aren't really going to like that. That's not really, you know, an attribute that it's not attractive, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, and obviously you want to, um, bring those kind of things up with tact and yeah. everything um but yeah you're you're really doing a disservice to them when you don't bring up those red flags that's actually that's a really good point because we've been looking at this kind of an in extremes you know drug use and whatever destructive behavior yeah. but <laughs> there's also much smaller and probably for our listening group uh more um i have got a hair that keeps falling right in my glasses and i cannot tell where it's going from. <laughs> okay anyways for our listeners uh it's probably more you know small scale things with their friends but it's it's yeah more relational yeah it's the same equation if you will like you know 2000 plus 2000 is the same uh as two plus two you know the same methodology it's just bigger numbers but you know whether you're in in a giant view of highly highly life-threatening destructive behaviors or someone who is not presenting themselves in the best light and is not making friends and influencing people because of their you know, smaller, but still destructive behaviors, you can, you can right. jump in and, and loyalty is not saying, oh, well, that's just how they are. Like they just, mm-hmm. that's how they talk to people. No, why don't you help them? And if they yeah. balk at your help, well, that's in, a bigger issue in your relationship, but loyalty is not just letting mm-hmm. someone, you know, is not, here we go. This is one of my favorite sayings. Loyalty is not letting sleeping dogs lie in your friendship Mm. it's not like oh well the dogs are asleep so therefore you know he's he's suffocating on a on a plastic bag it's on the ground but he's sleeping so i'll let him go no you gotta wake him up and get him saved and and you gotta loyalty is not just like well nothing's stirring over there so i'm just gonna let that just sit you you gotta you gotta help Mm. your friends even when they don't know that they need to be helped right yeah uh we are moving into number eight which is loyalty is not codependency. Um, some mm-hmm. people might construe misconstrue loyalty as being overly dependent on a friend or partner to the point where they can't function independently. I have seen this so many times. And when I started Friendever, I told people, it's like, hey, I'm not an expert. I only know what I know, but you know what? I have eyes and I have ears and I can see people's lives and I see where codependency is so destructive that they just view it as loyalty and 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 as a result they can't function without the other person they have no personal growth no personal self-development no self-sufficiency and even in a marriage and I wish we would have brought this up with Carissa when we interviewed her a while back but (laughs) it's like and I mean go listen to our married couple they talk about this stuff all the time you need your spouse and everything but you also need your own identity so right loyalty is not it's not you know putting your entire life in someone's hands because Mm -hmm. you know then you're hindering your own growth yeah um I work for Deering Married Couple and they're actually covering this topic this week codependency Uh, they had a follower um call in anonymously and ask about codependent in-laws and so they decided to cover that with a whole podcast episode Mm. anyway when I was editing this episode um my sister brought up this story she was listening to the dave ramsey podcast 
And this guy had called into the podcast telling Dave Ramsey, yeah, my in-laws are great. Like they, um, they bought me a car. He gave me a job, which is, that's, that's not bad. He bought me a house. My in-laws bought me a house and Dave Ramsey was like, whoa, whoa, slow down. Like they're, they did that for you because you're not able to mm-hmm. buy a house and buy a car right now. And now you're like in debt to your in-laws. You're going to feel the weight of that. And they're enabling your lack of um, self-sufficiency, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So wow. That was, yeah, that was a, it's funny because we covered that topic this week on the YMC as well. <laughs> because it's so universal. It's not just for marriages. Yeah. It's not just for friendships. It's not just for your work. It's not just for your church. It's not for just your parents. It's not just for your kids. It's not just for your sibling. It's for literally anything because your your personal growth and identity and being able to, to some extent, care for yourself. Now, we like to cover both sides here for Endeavor. So that does not mean that you get to be an island and be like, yeah, yeah, I don't need anybody else. I'm just me. And you right. know, I don't need anyone else to be. I'm loyal to myself. Whatever. No, 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 no. But you also cannot put your entire mm-hmm. identity under the banner of loyalty in someone else, mm-hmm. whether that be your in-laws, your parents, your your spouse, your whatever. Right. Loyalty is not codependency. Right. And in a multitude of counselors, there's safety. Mm-hmm. So yeah, while you ought not um, be overly dependent on someone and involve them in all your decisions, I mean, if it's not your spouse, <laughs> um, right. where they, they weigh so heavily in your decisions, but you should also seek counsel mm-hmm. in a multitude of counselors. So don't just depend on one person. Yeah. Trusted, trusted counselors mm-hmm. that you, not just someone that's like, you know, oh, well, he's family and he's, you know, he's been around a while so he clearly knows what he's talking about see the fruit check the fruit yeah you'll know them by their fruit check to see if they're actually uh producing something that's worth listening to um but yeah it's it's the vill- you got a village for a reason mm-hmm. but you cannot allow loyalty to become synonymous with codependency right well, you know, I'm glad that us and DYMC are basically the same, you know, in our brilliance. So I'm really glad to know <laughs> I'm the that. Same wavelength. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It actually helps lead us into our ninth one because it's the opposite in mm-hmm. codependency. And we talked about it for a minute, but is isolation. Loyalty is not isolation. In an attempt to be loyal to one person, individuals may isolate themselves from other friends or family members, thinking that they must prioritize one single relationship above all else. So we talked about, I'm an island, I don't need nobody, but (laughs) you can also wrap yourself up in one friendship. I know I struggled with this when I was younger because I thought that best friendship was a single person. I've talked about this on the podcast before. Blonde my brunette, you know, yin and yang, I thought, because that's how it's viewed in media books whatever it's like you got to have that one person and so I spent so much time as a young person zeroing in on one person saying okay this is the person I've chosen to be my best friend I'm going to be loyal to them and I'm going to carve out this relationship and I had it so wrong because first of all it doesn't have to be one person and second of all what if that person doesn't feel the same way about you and so you're pouring all this time energy and loyalty into a relationship and isolating yourself from other potential relationships it's a tier for a right. reason, people. More than one person can be on that tier. Obviously, the higher you exactly. go, the smaller the tiers are, so the less people are going to be there. But isolation goes completely against the friendship pyramid. That would be a friendship yeah. oval or circle or something. <laughs> like <laughs> It's a pyramid Rectangle. for a reason. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, funny story here. I work at a school. And so, I mean, every day there are just hilarious stories. Um, but just last week, uh, we were dealing with a conflict resolution. There were three young girls. Um, and after recess, they all three came in crying. And I was like, what is up? And it's it was, not even funny, but I'm already laughing. Oh, I know. I wanted her to sit next to me at lunch, but she sat next to the other person. Mind you they were sitting directly across from each other, but she uh, wanted her to uh, sit uh, next uh, to her. Okay. <laughs> so I mean, she's just, she has other best friends now. 
And I was like, oh my goodness. So one of the girls was older than the other two. And she's sitting there like, you guys, like I can be friends with both of you. I don't, this is really dramatic. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I was like, you know, you guys. And so I, I coached them through that. But it's is that why Karina played the, the video of the friendship video or the friendship pyramid <laughs> to teach them that? <laughs> I, yeah. I mean, ooh, in a middle school classroom, you've got all kinds of friendship yeah. drama. So yeah, they, they benefited from that. But I thought, you know, after that, I was like, you know, this is obviously very dramatized, but we do the same thing as adults, really. We're better at regulating our emotions. We're not going to sit there and cry because they didn't sit next to us. Mm -hmm. But I find myself being jealous sometimes, yeah. like, oh my word, like my friends have been spending a lot of time with so-and-so doing sleepovers. Why haven't they asked to have a sleepover with me recently? You know? Uh -huh. um, but yeah, loyalty is not isolation. Yeah. Or you see like multiple people in that tier. Yeah. You see like um, a bunch of people who would be, you know, from your, your good tier, uh, your good friend tier of the pyramid having a party or something. And you're like, I didn't, I didn't get an invite to that. Like why, why mm -hmm. was I excluded? It was more than likely nothing personal, but yeah. if you spend all your time focusing, isolating yourself on that one instance and misconstruing that as them being disloyal to you, you know, you're just, you're setting yourself up for issues. And like, like you said, you can regulate your emotions as an adult, but you got to be able to work through instances of, of like, oh, bummer, you know, and, and be able to realize that I don't have to be invited to every single thing that they do. Right. Because that would be isolating myself into only what they want to do. Like, if you blocked out your entire calendar so that one person would have access to it all the time is like you you're you're isolating or they're isolating whoever's doing the blocking from potential other you know events or whatever because you're like oh what if they ask me to yeah. get coffee I gotta be available for them I did that when I was younger like oh you know and totally it's, yeah. it's often viewed as an OBO like oh I got a better offer this time I have a whole philosophy mm -hmm. on OBOs, by the way, which we can, I can get a soapbox on later, but I would love to hear it. <laughs> Basically what it boils down to is don't isolate yourself from other relationships in the name of loyalty and don't let someone do that for you either. If you see someone like cutting themselves off from other people in pursuing you in a friendship or whatever, that's not healthy either because yeah even though you didn't mean to, their attention on you is, is not, I want to be careful here. Cause it's not that it's not healthy, but they clearly need help understanding how to make friends with, with more than one person, right? You don't have right. to go and isolate yourself on a journey of pursuing one person to be your friend. Like I did thinking that my best friend had to be one person and, and cut yourself yeah. off from other potential relationships on the way. Mm -hmm. Right. Number 10, our last one, we're about to wrap up here for the evening or the morning or the afternoon or whenever you're listening to this. It could be <laughs> you're on a plane and you're going from one time zone to another, but wherever you are, we are recording Ooh, in the evening. Should be me. <laughs> <laughs> should be me. Um, we are kind of looping back to number four. Number four was sacrificing self for others while neglecting self and responsibilities. And we're going to double down on that with number 10, loyalty is not having loyalty to a fault. Okay, like you'll mm -hmm. hear people say, oh, they're loyal to a fault. Like people may mistakenly believe that loyalty means never walking away from a toxic or abusive relationship. It also goes with the isolation one. This is kind of like the the peak at the mountain or the top of the hill. And it just kind of overarchingly covers everything on both sides. Um, everything that we talked about to this point. You got continued harm and unhappiness. And like we said, number four, neglect of yourself of your responsibilities just to make yourself more appealing as an individual for someone else mm -hmm. loyal to a fault the fault is the emphasis think of what a fault is and we've already touched on it so you don't have to think back too far but neglecting yourself and ne neglecting your other relationships if you're uh if you're a wife and you spend all your time supporting some event or something and you haven't seen your husband in three days because you're getting home while he's going to bed and you're getting up and he's going to work or whatever. And again, I'm, I'm not the person to, to speak on marriage issues, but just as a two person yeah. relationship, like example, 
you're neglecting that time that you could be spending with him because of your loyalty to a fault to something mm-hmm. else and I get it there's seasons and there's jobs yeah and there's there's events and stuff like that and I'm not I'm not yeah not anything in particular but I'm just saying if this is a constant pattern in your life whether it's with your kids or with your friends like I said we're a friendship uh podcast um loyalty to a fault will have just destructive influences the more it takes over your life mm-hmm well, that wraps up our loyalty episode and what it means to friendship. Um, when uh, when Kayla was talking about someone calling in an anonymous caller, it reminded me, hey, people, you got a question? You got a comment? You got a thought? Please email us at friendeverpodcast yes. at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you. We are not fancy. We don't have a phone number for you to call yet. But you know what? <laughs> a good old fashioned email works anytime. So please if you want to know more about the podcast why we started it you got thoughts you got opinions you disagree you agree shoot us an email we'd love to hear from you we really value your feedback and uh we want to produce content that is actually relatable and helpful and what you're Mm -hmm. looking for so we don't want to just ramble for no reason Mm -hmm. so please reach out with questions or concerns and if you really want to make a smile go ahead and drop a rating on this podcast which is a one two three four five stars p-l-e-a-s-e uh next week we are talking (laughs) about the challenges of long distance friendships so send a a copy of this link to your friend across the country say hint hint Mm -hmm. next week we're talking about long distance friends also just share the podcast with a pal because everyone needs a little bit of friendship in their life Thank you so much for stopping by this week. We will see you next week on For Never the Podcast. See you guys. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode of For Never the Podcast. Don't forget to subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. And if you enjoyed today's content, leave a review and share with a friend. You can find the show notes on our website, www.friendever.net, and in the description of this episode. Friendship is a journey. It's an endeavor. We'll see you next time on Friendever.